Tracy is the proprietor of the Aylesbury Clinic. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Keith. Why do you think we're getting fatter? Well, no, that was the sort of, I suppose, causative effect that I ran into for a moment there. But what I was going to mention now is possibly the different types of fat. And okay. then we can sort of get on to VASR. There are two basic types of fat. One is visceral fat that surrounds the organs. That's around the liver. It's around the heart. That's what kills you. The second thing is subcutaneous fat is underneath the skin. It's above the muscles. That's what we're technically taking out. The interesting thing about the two of them is that if you diet and exercise, you will get rid of visceral fat, which is the, the bad fat that sits around your liver that gives men the beer belly effect. Okay. You can exercise all you want, but apparently diet and exercise, well, certainly exercise, diet obviously, you know, it has a more causal relationship, but exercise removes only something, it's only effective in something like 5 to 7% of getting rid of subcutaneous fat. So this is why ladies run, tell you all the time, look, at, I can go to the gym all day long, it just doesn't shift this fat that's around sort of, you know, what we call the muffin top, the love handles, the, you know, the sort of the, the, the love lower... Hand, the love handles will do us, yes. Sure. What, what we're, what we're uh, and sort of abdominal fat. Now, this fat is very easily got by liposuction which is why the, such a market is there and the second thing liposuction can do in half an hour what I suppose going to the gym can do in two or three years and this isn't even me trying to sell a system this is sort of clinical fact instantaneous results in so words. what we've had to do it, I suppose is what we call mechanical aspiration of fat and that is where a doctor or proceduralist goes in with a metal cannula breaks down fat but also not only the dipetocytes which are the fat cells but blood vessels nerves are all sort of sucked out in the one time so it takes up to six weeks to heal you're bruised you have pain post-procedure what vaser is is technically an ultrasonic probe that's about the size of a biro pen and it goes into a little port in the, in the skin it melts and emulsifies the fat and as a consequence, you wait a couple of minutes and you just aspirate or suck the fat back out. So because it leaves the nerves, blood vessels behind, people are up and running within two days, you know. And um, you wear a corset for a few weeks after, after sort of normal liposuction, you wear a corset for about six weeks. But this is why it became so popular, because they end up being cheaper safer, less traumatic, less invasive, and as a consequence, people can come in two or three hours, um, getting it done under a local anaesthetic. Everything we try to do these days is under local anaesthetics. Mm -hmm. They're safer. There's a, 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 a mortality rate that exists with anaesthesia that's up to one uh, in 5,000. And this comes for many reasons. People who are fatter have higher risks. People who have heart attacks, um, are getting bypasses done, people who are in road traffic accidents, people who are cancer patients. So people do die on their anaesthesia. And it's not the anaesthesia's fault, it's the comorbidity that the patients are carrying. So if you can do something under a local anaesthetic, I mean, obviously the person can sit back, they can watch television, they can watch a DVD and get the procedure done to them. The downside of doing it under a local anaesthetic is the fact that you're putting something like two litres of fluid into the sort of fat cells around their abdomen, we're going to suck out maybe two litres, two and a half litres. So overnight, they're going to seep out about another half a litre, 500 mils, but about the size of a pint. But most people realise that it goes into little sort of dressings around them. And then the next day, that's changed and they're, and they're up and running. The fantastic thing about this as well is that normally with the older sort of methods of liposuction, if you remove two litres of fat, you could technically put a person into shock. It was too much fluid to take out of the system. The beauty of doing it on the local anaesthetic is because you're actually putting in high volume of fluid, you restore the homeostatic balance within the body and the person can go home and it would be extremely unusual to see anybody having any problems post-procedure. There's something like a quarter of a million VASA procedures done worldwide now and, you know, any of the side effects, I think, have just been minimal. Possibility of infection maybe as low as, I think, not 0.4%. You have a possibility of something called seromas, which is little collections of fluid that have to be aspirated off on the needle, and that's about 1 in 100. But, you know, we did three yesterday, we're doing three today, and you wouldn't really see problems from one year to the next. And you hear about uh, people who have had liposuction, celebrities, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's you read it in the paper, and then you see them two years later, and they they have to do it again. Sure. So, I mean, is there a case once you've had this procedure, you have to be 
behave yourselves as such. I, I think that's fair to say, Keith. And, and the interesting thing is the two different types of fat. It seems that if you take off fat cells, they cannot come back. You're born with, I think, it's 40 billion fat cells. If a procedure that sucks off so many, they're gone and that's it. Now, it cannot come back. It can. Mm. And the interesting thing is that it comes back in a different way. New cells don't come back, but the cells that are there can get bigger. But the interesting thing about subcutaneous fat is that it seems then to change its own physiological status. So in other words, even though you could have ran to the gym, you know, with the older fat cells, there were fairly tough things underneath the skin, the new ones as well seem to respond more like visceral fat cells, that if you do the diet and exercise, they can go away, it seems, up to four times faster than the older type that were sluggish and didn't remain there at all. So the type of people, I suppose, that we can't do are the sort of men that come in with beer bellies because a lot of that fat is underneath the rectus muscles of the abdomen and you couldn't just get an instrument in there. Now, these people are obviously more suitable if they have to get any procedure done for something like gastric banding. And even though in Ireland gastric banding has had a horrendous name over the years, patients dying in some clinics, then recently as well, that doctor, you know, down the country that sort of, you know, wasn't adjusting the bands afterwards, oh, yes, yes. patients vomiting, patients not losing any weight. Gastric banding, to be fair, done in the proper environment is a good procedure because we're going to face a problem going down the line of obesity of what we call the comorbidities. And that would be arthrosclerosis causing strokes, arthrosclerosis causing cardiovascular um, heart attacks. And that's going to be a horrendous expense on the, the system. They reckon in the NHS it could run as high over a period as 30 billion. Now, if you do something like um, gastric banding, obviously the expense to the state drops. And if we can in the near future mm. prove, and I don't mean we as clinicians, but I just mean we as a society, for instance, discover that actually obesity is an infection, this opens a whole plethora, a whole new box. Would it not we, be better just to stop um, eating junk food? Sure, Keith, but if you let me finish that sentence, if it is proven that it is an infection, then you're in a situation where why would you treat tuberculosis or pneumonia and you wouldn't treat obesity? So immediately all these people will fall within the remit of the state where the state will have to fix every one of them because technically then it wouldn't be the person's fault it would be a microbial fault so there's a whole ethical thing potentially sitting on the horizon if the causal link is proven we just seem to be getting more and more and more obese and there's more and more pe fat people as you said so this is for somebody who is fat who wants to get rid of their fat what's the procedure briefly and uh, how can they go about it okay how they contact uh, you the first come in for a consultation and we screen them to see whether they're suitable or not. So people with subcutaneous fat, most people are suitable, most women are, are suitable. And um, when they go in, it's broken into a three-stage procedure and um, the first stage is um, where the anaesthetic is uh, put into the body and mm -hmm. that is, is, is quite straightforward, quite easy it, it, it do, doesn't hurt. The second stage is we make a little porthole pass in a cannula and you emulsify the fat and the third stage then is you aspirate out so that's the technical end of it. The whole thing takes about two hours and um, the patient um, if they want to sort of get the procedure I mean obviously you can phone us at Aylesbury mm -hmm. uh, and that's um, Dublin number is 269-2255 the Cork number is 021 and they'll always get us on aylesburyclinic.ie. And this is the quicker version and the better version from the old liposuction system. Then. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that, you know, sort of uh, this has superseded the old system and probably in the future itself will be superseded by something else. Okay. And it's obviously quite popular, as you said, you've had a couple for the last couple of days. Oh, absolutely. Lovely. The most popular. Pleasure talking to you. Dr. Thanks, Patrick Kate. Tracy, the proprietor of the Ellsbury Clinic. We were talking about Vaser Ultrasonic Liposuction System. You can contact them if you want any more details. Let's take a break.